What is going on guys, it is Danny here and today I'm coming at you from the Grand Canyon, it's beautiful out here and it's a beautiful blue sky as you can see so today I'm going to be talking about sunlight exposure and is sunlight good for you? Well first of all let me say that sunlight is completely natural and being out in sunlight is completely natural as well so if you think about our ancestors they wouldn't be dropping their cameras, they would be out on a out and about all day, um, getting exposure to sunlight, you know, hunting and gathering, building shelters, and they'd be in very little or no clothing at all. So think about today's uh, kind of lives today. We wake up often when it's still dark in our houses. Sure, we've got artificial light in the house, but it's not really kind of being outside in sunlight. We'll jump in the car or we'll get in the tube, which is even worse, which is underground, you know, go to work, no real exposure to sunlight. And then we get in the office, most of us, and we stay in there all day. And we're often in there until it actually gets dark, so we don't really get exposure to sunlight at all. And worst, when it gets dark, that's when we start using artificial light. So we get artificial blue light from light bulbs, computer screens, TVs, laptops, etc. So there's a big difference between how we, we live and our ancestors did when it comes down to light exposure. But it is natural for us to be out in sunlight. So is sunlight important? Is it good for us? Well, yes, it is in the right amounts. So the running of the human body is a really complex thing. So there's thousands of processes that actually run in the body. And it turns out that many of these processes are actually called uh, circadian rhythms. And circadian rhythms are basically repeatable 24-hour cyclic processes. Um, as I say, they run roughly every 24 hours. And we have loads of these circadian rhythms, and they're actually all governed or, or regulated by a master regulator in the brain. It's a system in, in the brain that we all have called the suprachiasmatic nucleus. And the suprachiasmatic nucleus, as I say, is the master regulator of all these circadian rhythms. And the suprachiasmatic nucleus is actually governed by the night and the day cycle. So it gets its cues from sunlight, so when the sun goes up and when the sun goes down as to when to you know, drive these processes so they're running at the right time um, for optimal health. So the timing of these circadian rhythms is really important for our overall health. Um, if we mess up the timings, that can impact our health. So it turns out that, um, I think it's I think it's 15% of our genome, which is a lot, that's thousands of process, processes, are actually controlled by these circadian rhythms and the suprachiasmatic nucleus, so that's a lot of processes. So our kind of genome has evolved, you know, to be married up with exposure to sunlight over, you know, a couple of million years. And uh, in our modern day society, we're not actually getting enough sunlight. But that's only really occurred in the past 100 years, 200 years. So what that's actually doing is it's, it's, it's really kind of confusing this suprachiasmatic nucleus as to when it's nighttime and when it's daytime. So we're really confusing it. So it's not getting a clear cut message of, you know, is it nighttime or is it daytime? And that in turn is messing up the regulation and the timing of all these key processes. So, you know, that's kind of messing them up and that's having an impact on our health ultimately. So we now know basically, so if, you're, if we don't get enough exposure to sunlight in the day and we get too much blue light at night, that can be impactful to our health. So we know people that work shifts. So if you're working in a hospital, for example, and you're working all night and then you're sleeping at day, that can impact your health. And people that do work shifts, it's been shown they have multiple fold increased risks of many diseases um, so that's a bad thing so we want to make sure we're getting the, the right exposure to sunlight so it can kind of train or, or kind of tell the suprachiasmatic nucleus when to turn on these processes when to turn them off when to turn on the genes rather when to turn them off to run these functions for optimal health so if we don't we're kind of messing up key processes like sleep and cell cycle repair and growth so it's really important to get the right amount so that's a big reason why getting the right amount of sunlight exposure is really important. So another good reason why sunlight is important, important is it actually boosts our energy. So you're all probably aware that we use food as a fuel source, right? So we kind of get energy from the food and we use that as a fuel source to, to kind of, you know, move around and, and live basically. Now, the, 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 the things in our body that actually create the energy are called mitochondria and the energy is actually called ATP or adenosine triphosphate. And these mitochondria are said to be like the power stations of our cells. They live in all our cells, basically. And um, some cells will have 100, some can have, have up to 100,000. And basically, these little mitochondria, um, they, they're basically used, using the energy for an, or, or taking the food and creating this energy to run our bodies, creating this ATP. 
Now, you might not know that sunlight can actually be said to be another fuel source because what it does is the near infrared, infrared radiation in the sun actually massively boosts the mitochondria's production of this ATP or this adenosine triphosphate so we get more energy basically. So when we're out getting sunlight, we're actually creating more energy. And when we're indoors all day, not getting any sunlight, we're not making as much energy as we could be. So that's another good reason as well. Uh, next good reason is the impact of sunlight on our mood. So I'm sure you always feel in a better mood on a sunny day. And basically we know we know what it is now. So when we get sunlight, it make, we actually make something in the skin called beta endorphin. And that ends up in our bloodstream and it makes us feel good basically. So beta endorphin makes us feel good. And you might have heard the expression runners high. So that's because these runners, they feel good when they're running long distances because they're making this beta endorphin the same endorphin. So get out in sunlight and you feel good basically. That's another good reason. Um, another reason is uh, we really need sunlight to make vitamin D. So it's a UVB radiation in sunlight that makes vitamin D in our bodies basically. And vitamin D is not actually a vitamin, it's actually a steroid hormone and it's really critical to health because it actually controls or regulates over 5% of our genomes. That's about a thousand processes that vitamin D regulates. And when we're not getting enough vitamin D, and most of us aren't, um, especially in the West, we're not, you know, we're not actually running these processes at, uh, at the optimal level. Um, so that's gonna impact our health in turn as well. So I, I actually live out in England and between the months of November and April, I think it is, we can't actually make vitamin D in our skin. Um, so it's really important we get enough vitamin D in the, in the summer months. Also, if you're working in an office, obviously you're not getting sunlight, but even if you're working by the window, we have kind of like glass walls, uh, UVB irradiation can't penetrate that. So it's really important we get outside um, to get this vitamin D basically. So that's it, guys. That is why vitamin, uh, why sunlight is important to us, um, and why we should get a uh, good amount. So obviously, I don't recommend you know sp spending all day outside if you're not used to being out in the sun because you know you can get um, burned basically. So you don't want to be burnt. But I'd say you know try and get at least half an hour, um, probably maximum two hours out in sunlight, um, uh, and that should get give you the right right levels. Obviously, it's different for everyone, um, and people burn at different levels depends on. You know how fair your skin is or if how old you are as well um, and where you live etc so just be careful um, I would seek um, the advice of a professional before you start you know getting out in sunlight more um, so I'm not a professional I'm just kind of sharing with the best of you that I've learned from the experts out there um, so don't take this as medical advice um, but you know take it as a guideline all right thanks guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video